All right, I had done a few videos before on off the grid, why off grid, and kind of like my setup here, but I'm still getting a few different questions uh, on what do you mean by off the grid? How did you do this? Does it take a gazillion solar panels? Uh, how did you get started? Blah, blah, blah. So again, I don't want to make like a two hour long uh, video, but I am going to, you can visit the, uh, the lollards.org, the, T-H-E, lollards, L-O-L-L-A-R-D-S dot O-R-G. And I've got some pictures and stuff answering those questions there. But I also wanted to take just a few minutes on this video just to kind of go back through it since it was also part of the point here is to help people unplug from the matrix and if you choose maybe off-grid is right for you not an expert here still learning it as I go but let me turn this around and I'll kind of give you the tutorial what we learned how the solar works etc oh, there's the Sun all right first of all that building is basically what we started with Honestly, I think this was on clearance. Now this was, oh, it was before we moved to uh, New York City. Uh, so we're talking probably 12, 13 years ago. It was like on clearance for like, I wanna say five grand. It's probably more than that now. But, let me just kinda give you the lowdown here. You can kinda see, well, we'll walk over there. You can see the solar panels and the turbine there. I wanted to kind of experiment with wind and sun. So I guess I'll give you guys the good, the bad, and the ugly there. I've only got one solar panel powering this. This little building, which I've got a bunch of junk in here I need to clean out. This was kind of the uh, the first test. Now I've got a bunch of junk in here I need to clean up. Kind of became the media room. Uh, but, at, but at one point, and like I said, I'll post a bunch of pictures at the end of this video just so you can kind of see the progression. But there was uh, bunk beds over here, and then there was, there's a bed upstairs. Uh, honestly, this would be more than enough if a person was like, hey, tiny, tiny house, this is more than good enough for me. And you can see, you can hear, uh, it's only on the fan, I think, right now, but, oh, there's an air conditioner in the window. You can turn the air conditioner on, but it does pull quite a bit of power, kind of like this, this little fireplace. If it's just for looks, the fire right here, but once you turn it on to heat, it uses a lot of power. TV, stuff like that, on the other hand, use hardly none. Okay very down and dirty. Uh, you see a lot of people with these solar setups and they've got like, uh, you know, these batteries, look at car batteries, they got all these wires, DC inverter, all this different stuff. For me personally, nature's generator, and no, they don't pay me or anything. I uh, wish they'd give me free batteries, but uh, they were pretty good for me because basically it has everything you need in here. It has a, uh, battery panel here it's telling me with everything on hey james you're using about looks like 190 watts and you can kind of test stuff to see what is you know draining what but this is the battery now this is what they call the power pods what this basically is is for your battery bank once you plug these in they all charge together and they all use electricity together again you can see hey it's full once the bars go down the lights go down then you're starting to run out of power if you've got enough power going in you won't lose any but that's kind of how this setup works these white batteries aren't that great that's why they ended up becoming basically used for this to power this little building um, again living and learning and you can see oh here's a light switch hey what's that yellow wire well we never Put drywall or anything up so you can see exactly where we wired everything to the lights oh you can see the outlets um, but yeah I mean honestly watching a YouTube video or something it's not that difficult and what we ended up doing originally is these plugs came out to here and it was used to hook up like a generator so you could run like a air conditioner or whatever you wanted well, then I ended up just, once we figured out the solar panel thing, I just ran a cord basically in there. Could have done it a lot cleaner, but that's kind of where it is at the moment. And before we go inside, again, I'll post a bunch of pictures uh, at the end of this video, just kind of going through the stages, but ended up deciding, you know what? I want something a little bigger than that if I'm gonna try this off the grid thing. 
Um, and it was during COVID, so I had a lot of free time since they kept canceling all the trips we were doing. So anyway, went with, uh, I think it's Gober. Uh, small buildings, pole barns, whatever it's called. So a pole barn is again, not perfectly balanced. It's basically just an empty shed. I ended up kind of customizing it saying, hey, I want this overhang, I want this, I want this many windows, blah, blah, blah. I want this little awning around it. And, uh, and then again, I'll post pictures, but it was just an empty building. Uh, they did in increments like you pay for the supplies, then if you want them to do the work, you pay another group to put it together, then you pay one last payment to do the cement. And thankfully, I ended up uh, buying it kind of when all the product was low, but at the same time, if I would have bought it like two years earlier than I did, I think this entire setup, cement, everything put together was around 15 grand. Well, this whole setup cost me about 20 grand. Now, when we go on the inside, and that's counting the solar panels and everything, you'll see that we get pretty much closer up to after I framed all the rooms myself and just bought the wood from Lowe's and Home Depot, um, it probably cost me closer to 30 grand. But again, you're talking a 1500 square foot house for 30 grand. And again, you'll see that, I, I, I don't get why some of these houses that you see in like the towns will have like, I mean, their roofs will be covered in solar panels and they still use way more than that. Uh, I mean, I get it with those huge uh, central heat and air units, but point being, it's funny because somebody asked me, do you have, we have 50 panels, how many do you have? And I'm like, uh, eight, six here, and I've got two here to catch when the sun comes over the tree line here in the morning just because it catches it a little earlier here. And each panel roughly generates 100 watts if it's fully sunny. The windmill, if it's turning, will actually do 400 on its own. So part of me wanted to just kind of experiment with these and just kind of see, all right, what works, what doesn't. Good news is they all work pretty adequately. And you can see over time, the wire basically, I just try not to drive over this area. It goes in this window, we'll go there in a minute. While we're here, here's the rain barrels. Again, pretty good set of gutters that filter the rainwater, comes down here. Uh, there's actually treatment in here. And then when it overflows, it will go into this one. And I mean, literally, these are 55 gallons each. And it takes like almost no rain. And it will fill all four of them pretty quick. And again, yes, it's treated, um, but at the same time, I think it's fine to, you know, take a shower in, wash uh, your clothes, whatever else, but I would rather run it through a filter before I drink it just to be safe. That's basically what that is. It's basically just completely filtered water. So let's walk around here and I'll kind of walk back to the battery storage area here. Again, the batteries in here are black. They're what they call the elite. The white ones in the little building run up to 1800 watts. These run 3500. And just real quick, because I didn't know either, what that means is at a time. So if you think about it, basically through trial and error, usually I have the TV on, the DVD player on. I mean, that's a, like a 55 inch TV. I mean, it uses hardly anything. These lights use very little and they're supposed to last for 23 years. Lights like this, you can have. I went in and hooked them up when we were wiring it, but they do use, again, those are LED, so they only use 12 watts per bulb, but honestly, it's a little bit too bright um, if you don't really need it. Box fan in the window works actually really well and a lot cheaper wattage wise than um, an air conditioner. And each room I purposely, this is my room, that's why it's messy. I, I purposely only put one outlet in each room. You can see though, you can plug in several things to it because I mean, come on, if it's off the grid, people always complain, I need like 20 outlets. I'm like, all right, then you shouldn't have came. <laughs> but uh, real quickly here, that's going from the outside. You can see, uh, there's where we were. Oop. 
and runs in here. Again, you can hear it's super quiet. These eight batteries act as one. And honestly, I don't think, staying here all weekend, I don't know last time I've used one. Now what you heard then, because I just turned on a couple of things, is it kicked on, so it's running a little bit harder, but that'll last, it's basically just an internal fan that just cools it off. But these batteries uh, basically will act as if it's just one giant battery. So again, we'll find out over the years, just like a cell phone, how quickly they run out. But so far, had some really good luck with them. And the good thing is, uh, once we have to actually replace them, with the Nature's Generator, you basically pop the top, put a new battery in, put it back together, you're good. You don't have to like throw this away and get another one. And again, I have two refrigerators. These will actually go to well below freezing uh, if I want it to. But they're also eco-friendly, so they only use about 50 watts. Here's the other one. So with everything going on right now, including the fan, everything else, we're using, oh, there we go, 283 watts. And again, all that did was you, you heard it kick off. Uh, it'll basically kick on that fan, still very quiet. Um, what the 3,500 watts means, believe it or not, like this microwave, when you turn it on, while it's on, it's using about 1,000 watts. When I'm running that vacuum and I'm hitting some pretty rough spots, it runs about eight, 900 watts. The coffee machine, believe it or not, it only lasts like the Keurig for like 10, 15 seconds. But while it's running, it's using like 1200 watts. It doesn't matter as long as I'm not, well, I wanna vacuum, run the Keurig, and I wanna uh, run three vacuums at once. Okay, well then you're probably gonna run into a problem. Again, just a, foot pump sink. You think, oh, that's primitive. You know what, it works pretty good, actually. You get used to it. Um, oh, and of course, everybody's biggest question. Honestly, the composting toilet, you wanna look in there? No, I'm kidding, it's empty. Uh, it's not that bad. And again, put the compost on it, and kinda like the YouTube video said that I watched, if you smell anything, you're doing it wrong. Got the little indoor shower if you need it. Normally, I have an outdoor shower, no point in showing you that. But uh, it's the uh, out, outdoor shower is just a lot simpler in my opinion. But uh, no, that's it kind of in a nutshell. So those batteries, you can find them on sale a lot of times. Usually 15% is about the most you're going to find. Um, one of the things that this channel is going to explore, and unfortunately that means I'm going to be exploring with you, is, uh, I mean, not that I don't want to do that. What I mean is the batteries will eventually run out just like a cell phone. So they're supposed to last with heavy usage and a heavy usage is defined as completely draining them and then recharging them, completely draining them, recharging them. Thankfully, I don't think I've ever completely drained them. So hopefully it'll last longer than the eight years. Uh, solar panels, you know what? I just found out uh, from some of our uh, environmental zealots uh, the little Greta's. These things, I didn't realize that, they only last about 20 years, these panels. They don't even know uh, how to recycle them yet. Uh, heaven forbid our elite leaders have thought about the recycling before we get to the point of having to recycle them. But uh, yeah, that's gonna be kind of a pain in the neck because if in 20 years, again, hopefully I'm still alive, I'll worry about it then, but in 20 years, if I have to replace all these, you know, it does get a little bit costly uh, at a couple hundred bucks each. But again, that's part of the, the pains of off the grid. The good thing with off the grid is, hey, what's your uh, utilities this month? Zero. Oh, well, what about your, you know, this, that, and the other? Uh, zero. But there is maintenance involved with that. So again, you can you could see like the drywall and everything and again like i said i'll post some pictures but uh yeah that's that's kind of it all in this thing you're probably looking at somewhere between 30 maybe 35 grand if you count the fireplace the fireplace i didn't want to goof around with um and like have me up there trying to like cut a hole in the roof and then it leaks i was like nah forget this so I actually just paid a professional, so that alone was like five grand to get the fireplace and uh, get them to install it because the pipes and everything alone was more expensive than the fireplace itself. But uh, again, if you're gonna be off the grid, a little propane 
heater is probably not going to do it. So wood burning is easy peasy. And as you can see over here, oops, let me get that to zoom. We've got ample mountains of wood out here. Basically, whenever a tree dies, we just kind of mark it and it's dead anyway. So then why waste it? So that's kind of it. I could go back up there. You guys have already seen the garden and everything, a little Zen garden. So I won't bore you with that again. But yeah, that's kind of it in a nutshell. Root cellar there, no point going into that. That little building is gonna, I'm probably gonna get rid of that. That thing, pain in the neck to put together and not really worth anything. Again, live and learn. But yeah, if you said, you know what? I want this little building. I wanna remove those crappy doors and I'm gonna put in some nice real doors. You could totally uh, either panel it, insulate it, um, drywall, whatever you want to use. And that would actually be ample for a little home. So when I see these tiny homes for sale for like 80 grand, and I'm like, dude, this house, that right there is five grand. Well, the tiny home's nicer. Yeah, it's not $75,000 nicer. And plus it's set up to where you're gonna have to hook up everything else with it. And then again, 1500 square feet, you saw that it's hard, you know, it's far from being just totally primitive, but roughly speaking, um, if you just said the bare bones, you're probably looking at about 20 grand, but you're gonna have to put in, um, you know, like I said, I painstakingly put in all the wood, the frames, learned that as I went, insulated it. Uh, I did hire a couple of guys to help me with the paneling or the uh, drywall because that is not fun. Uh, Dad and me and a friend put up the pole. I climbed up there, put up the turbine. Again, Dad and I hooked up the insulation. So, so again, this is very doable and it's not that primitive. People make it sound like I'm out here in a tent, but so again, food for thought. Um, I'll leave a bunch of information like websites and stuff that I got some of this stuff from in the, uh, uh, the comments or the about section, as well as put a bunch of pictures at the end of this film, but our film video. But again, if you want to get out of the matrix, I seriously, if I can do this, I mean, anyone can, and, and, and no matter what you're paying, where you're living, as far as rent goes, you can afford 30 grand. So again, food for thought.